Hi friends, welcome back. You wanna say hi, Root Bear? Everybody say hi, Root Bear, wave your arm with you, Root Bear, wave, there you go, Root Bear. What happened to the story last week? I have no idea. It's like it just stopped. I know, it just stopped. It, it just stopped. And you know what I did? I kept telling and telling and I thought I had the whole thing and I should always check those things first. I should probably check those things first. So sorry if you went and clicked on the story last week and then there was nothing after like two and a half minutes. Miss T.I. is just learning. She is. We're all just learning. Oh, I can't say I don't make mistakes anymore. True. Oh, well, I couldn't be for either, right? Everybody makes mistakes. But today, I'm going to tell a story. And it's going to be the whole story this time. So I hope you are ready for the whole story about Herbert and Gerbert. I know I'll tell them. So when I was a little girl, a long, 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 long. Put your hand in my mouth. There's enough longs. Time ago when I was a little girl. My dad used to tell stories to my brothers and sisters and me about two little boys named Herbert and Gerbert. And Herbert and Gerbert actually got to go. Well, let me tell this part and then you can do your funny face, okay? They got to travel on Haley's, what? You don't wanna wait anymore? Sometimes you have to be patient, Root Bear. Can you just be patient for a minute? Seriously, I, I was in the middle of a sentence. Don't be rude, you're not Root Bear. You're Root Bear, right? Anyway, Herbert and Gerbert would travel on Haley's Comet's tail and he would take them back to amazing times in history. I'm done. You wanna make your funny face? Do you want Root Bear to make a funny face? Oh, okay, okay, I'll let Root Bear make his funny face. And then I'll put you down over there where you can listen to the story too, okay? All right, Root Bear, what kind of funny face are you going to make today? You want me to help you? Okay, what do you want me to do? Seriously? Okay, here's Root Bear's funny face. Root Bear, you look mad. You're not mad? It's a funny face. Okay, let's do it again. That looks funnier. Let me see. Ah! <laughs> you look so silly. There you go. You hope that people like that funny face. You've been working on some new funny faces? Really? Like what? Oh, trying to look more like me? Root Bear. That's, I don't have a funny face. Can I get to the story now? All right, everyone do the root bear wave and wave bye root bear. Bye root bear, bye. There you go, right over here, buddy. Okay, so as I said, this is a story that my, about two little boys that my dad used to tell us about when I was a little girl. Now, Herbert and Gerbert were brothers Herbert was older and Gerbert was younger, and they loved to catch fireflies in the summertime or lightning bugs. Do you call them fireflies or do you call them lightning bugs? Sometimes I call them lightning bugs. Sometimes I call them fireflies. It depends. Either way, they're really fun, and Herbert and Gerbert would take a mason jar out in the backyard, and they would catch fireflies and put them in the jar and leave them there for just a little bit and then let them go so they could look at them. Because fireflies in the dark, what they do is they their light goes on, blink, and then it goes off. And then they fly someplace else and it blinks again, and then it goes off. And then they fly someplace else and it blink, and then it goes off again. So you have to keep your eyes on them and keep watching all around to see where it's gonna blink next 
if you want to catch them and you have to kind of get your night eyes really good. And then when it blinks again, you could catch a lightning bug very gently because we don't want to hurt little creatures. Every little creature has its place in nature, right? And you can look at it, light up, and it will tickle your hand, and then you can let it go. Well, Herbert and Gerbert were out catching lightning bugs when all of a sudden, Herbert noticed a little light way up high in the sky, and he blinked and he rubbed his eyes and he said, Hey, Gerbert, says Herbert to Gerbert. Gerbert, check it out. There's a light up in the sky. And he says, Yeah, I know. It's called stars. No, it's getting bigger. Well, the two boys stood together, and sure enough, the little light got bigger and bigger and bigger until it went whoosh right through the alley behind their backyard. And Herbert and Gerbert got a big happy look on their face because they knew who it was. It was their good friend, Haley's Comet. And Haley's Comet had come to take them on another adventure. Well, Herbert and Gerbert said, yay, Haley's is here. And Haley swooped around and shoo, landed right in the back alley behind the backyard. Well, Herbert and Gerbert went running up to him. Haley's, are you gonna take us on another adventure, they said. And he said, yes, boys. I plan to take you someplace really special. But first, don't forget, you've got to go in and tell your mother where you're going because you should never leave the yard without your mother knowing where you're going, right? Yeah, that's good advice, Haley said Herbert and Gerbert. And they ran up the house, and as they did, Haley's called to them, and get a sweater. It's going to be chilly wherever you're going. Okay, Haley's, they said, and they ran into the house. There their mother was sitting at her computer, typing away, writing another op-ed for Atlantic Monthly on, yes, and, and they said, Mom, Mom, and she said, just a minute, let me finish this thought. Yes, boys, what is it? Do you need a snack? No, 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 we wanted to let you know we're going on another adventure with Haley's Comet. Is that okay? And she says, oh, your adventures with Haley's Comet. Of course, have fun. Now, I'm going to get back to work, but be back in time for bedtime. It looks like you've only got about a half hour to play. Okay, they said. Bye, Mom. And they grabbed a sweater and out they went. And Mom went back to typing. Do you think their mom thought that they were really going for a ride on Haley's Comet? I don't think so either. I think she thought they were pretending. But they were really going for a ride on Haley's Comet. They grabbed their warm sweaters and they ran back out to the back alley and said, Okay, Haley's, where are we going? He said, We are going to a special time. It's going to be December 17th. 1903. Wow, they said. What happened on that day? Well, you're about to find out, said Haley's. Hold on tight to my tail. And the two boys grabbed onto Haley's Comet's tail and held on super tight and whoosh up into the air he flew. Now, what you may not know is that in order to go back in time, according to Albert Einstein, who was a very, very, very smart person and who was super good at math and had figured out all kinds of things with using numbers and math. So you should be doing your math homework so that you get really smart at math too. But he figured out that if you could go faster than the speed of light, you could actually move back, back in time. The closer you get to the speed of light, the slower time will get. And if you could actually go faster, you could go backwards in time. Crazy, I know. But Halley's Comet had figured out a way to use the infinite energy of the universe to speed up his trajectory and fling himself way out past Pluto and back around the other side, around the sun, and get spinning so fast that the boys were holding on and the, they, when they went through the asteroid belt, the asteroids were going choo, 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 past them like, choo, like crazy. And then they spun around again and faster and faster until pretty soon when they went through the asteroid belt, the asteroids were going backwards. And then they came and slowed down across the ocean. The Atlantic Ocean, although they did not know that at the time. And they were skirting across the surface of the ocean. And Herbert, catching his breath after quite a fast ride, says, Haley's, where are we? He said, we're in, just off the coast of North Carolina, near a little town called Kitty Hawk. Hold on tight, boys. We're going to land on the beach right by a place called Kill Devil Hill. 
while Herbert and Gerbert held on in Haley's shoo landed so gently. And when he landed, Herbert and Gerbert hopped off, and it was chilly. They said, boy, Haley's, thanks for telling us to get a sweater. They buttoned up their sweaters to stay nice and cozy because the wind was blowing really strong. But there they were on a beach with just grass and stuff and nobody around, and they said, what's going on here? And Haley says, well, not right here, he said. Boys, what I want you to do is go over that next hill and you'll find another hill. And there you will see some um, an amazing sight. You're going to see a small group of people standing around a very odd looking flying machine. Wait a minute, said Gerbert. I think I know who we're gonna see. I read about this in school. Haley's, are we gonna see Orville and Wilbur Wright, the Wright brothers? And Haley says, yes, you are, boys. But before you do that, they're going to be very busy. So when you go there, you look for a teenage boy. His name is Johnny Moore. And he's the only kid who was there with the Wright brothers for their first flight. But now you are going to be there, too. Oh, boy, said Gerbert. He always thought he would like to grow up to be a pilot. He had a picture of the Wright Flyer, which was the very first flying machine ever that he got when the family had gone to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. on summer vacation. And they saw the very first airplane called the Wright Flyer, and he got a poster of it. And Herbert and Gerbert were so excited to go see the very first airplane fly. Well, Herbert and Gerbert climbed over the hill, and sure enough, there they saw it. It didn't look like an airplane like you or I, no. It had two wings, one on top of the other, and it was made of wood. And covering the wings was a white cloth called muslin. It wasn't made of steel or aluminum or anything. And there were four or five people standing around working on this thing. They spotted two men that looked like they were the guys in charge, and they were kind of messing around with some gears and things as they came up over the hill. And then they saw another guy who was doing stuff with an engine in the back there. And the engine looked very odd. It was just kind of wired to this wooden frame. It was, it was a very precarious looking vehicle. Well, they looked around for someone that looked like a teenager and sure enough, there was a skinny tall boy standing there. And they went up to him and said, Hey, hi. And he looked at him and says, what are you doing here? He said, no one's supposed to be here. How did you know to come here? And they said, well, Herbert, or Haley's Comet sent us and said to find someone named Johnny. Are you Johnny Moore? And Johnny Moore said, I am Johnny Moore. Haley's Comet sent you? I know him. He used to take me for rides back when I was a little boy. Well, guess what's happening here? And Herbert says to Gerbert, says Herbert to Gerbert, Gerbert says Herbert to Gerbert, should we tell him we already know? And Ger Herbert shakes his head and says, no, Gerbert, let's let him tell us. What, they said. And Johnny Moore started to explain to them. He said, you see those two men over there? The taller one, that's Orville Wright. And that other guy on the other side of the plane, that's his brother Wilbur. And they have a bicycle shop in Dayton, Ohio. They build bicycles and sell bicycles. If you, look, if you look at this, you see how there's wires there? Those are like spokes from bicycles. And if you look at the chains that connect that engine in the back, he said, look at that. What do they look like? And Gerbert says, bicycle chains. And Herbert says, I didn't know they rode bicycles. They didn't ride, well, they did ride bicycles, said Johnny, but they also built bicycles. They were bicycle mechanics, and that's how they got so smart to build this airplane. This flyer, he didn't call it an airplane, he called it a flyer because the word airplane wasn't invented yet. So, so they said, well, that is so cool. So who's that other guy back there that's messing around with the engine? And, and Johnny looks and says, who? Oh, that's Charlie, Charlie Taylor. He worked in the bike shop too, and they tried to get an engine made from different shops, but they made them too heavy because they were making them out of iron. But Charlie, he figured out how to use aluminum. 
Aluminum is a whole lot lighter, so it would be easier to lift up off the ground. That is so cool, thought Herbert Gerbert. Can we go meet him? Oh, not right now. They're really busy because Orville is about to make the first flight. What time is it? I don't know. I don't have my cell phone with me, said Herbert. What's a cell phone, said, said Johnny? Uh, my, my watch. I mean my watch. You're very strange boys, said Johnny. Yes, but anyway, so what, what's going to happen next? And next, they stood on the hill. They said, just stand here and watch what happens. So, so the guy in the back, Charlie Taylor, he pours some gasoline into a container on top, above the, the engine with a hose going to it. And the gasoline would just drip down into the engine, mixing with air, and it would fire up the pistons and get the engine moving. And the engine was connected with bicycle chains to two propellers in the back of the air of the flyer. Do you know how airplanes you see in a propeller plane from like old movies and stuff? How the propeller is on the front of the airplane? Not the first flyer. The propellers were on the back of the airplane. Well Herbert and Gerbert watched as they spun those propellers and the engine kicked in and Orville was sitting in the seat and it was just this little little seat with his feet straight out and he was holding on to these gears that were working the wings and the rudder and all this other stuff. And he says, okay, fire her up, boys. And they fired her up and the airplane or the, the flyer started moving forward, forward. It was rolling on the ground on bicycle wheels and then pretty soon it lifted up and it flew just a few feet and then boom, 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 back down to the ground. And everybody cheered and they got a big picture of it. That's one of the most famous pictures in aeronautic history. The very first human flight by powered by an engine. Well, they, they, the men all went and were cheered and patted Orville on the back and Wilbur said, it's my turn now, my turn, bring it back up here. So they took it back up to the top of the hill and they put some more gasoline in. And again, they spun those rudders and they began to fly. And, they, and now Wilbur is stand, sitting in the, in, the, in the seat and he's running the rudders and everybody is holding their breath and going, okay, ready, go. Now there was a really strong wind. It was super windy and they were flying right into this wind. So that made it a little more difficult and the, the flyers were sort of pitching and twisting a little bit, but, but Wilbur grabbed a hold of the controls and he pulled to turn the wings just a little bit and he turned the rudder just a little bit to get it even and boop, 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 it went a little further this time. And everybody cheered, yay! And they brought it back up and Orville said, okay, my turn, my turn. And Herbert and Gerbert looked at each other and said, hey, they're taking turns just like we do. They're each getting a turn. You know how we share and take turns? Do you take turns with your brothers and sisters or with your friends? It's important to take turns so everyone gets a turn, isn't it? Well, that's what the Wright brothers did. So Orville went up again and finally, for the fourth flight, Wilbur got in and he was there and this flight just took off. Now the other ones were just really short, like half a minute or something like that. And when Wilbur went up on the fourth flight, he went much further than, than they had gone since. He went 852 feet and it lasted almost a full minute in the air. And the people were jumping up and down and cheering and so excited. They said, and, and Orville says, okay, should we do another one now? It's only about noon, so they had plenty of time to do to do lots more flights. But but as they were bringing the, the flyer back up the hill to get another running start to go and fly again in the air, so they were bringing back up Kildover Devil Hill, Herbert looked up in the sky. And Herbert says to Gerbert, says Herbert to Gerbert, Gerbert, says Herbert to Gerbert, what is that light up there? And Gerbert says, maybe it's Haley's coming back to get us. I hope he doesn't come too soon. I want to see another flight of the right flyer. And they looked at that little light and they watched it. And as it got bigger, it became very clear that it was not Haley's Comet. Now Haley's Comet had a nemesis. This was Bad Comet Morehouse. And Bad Comet Morehouse was always trying to make trouble and stop 
really good inventions and really cool things from happening. And he would always try to just get in the way and, and just cause all kinds of havoc and damage wherever he went. And they looked up and they said, oh, it's bad Comet Morehouse, Wilbur, Orville, Johnny, Johnny, and, 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 and Charlie, quick, get the, get the flyer back up here. Bad Comet Morehouse is coming, and Bad Comet Morehouse is honing in on the flyer. And he says, I'm going to flip that flyer over and catch it on fire with my fire and ice. And I'm going to ruin the Wright Brothers flyer, and I'm going to destroy the picture. And he comes flying and flying in, and the, the man, I'll grab the, the, the flyer bring it up and he comes in and whoosh goes over and it flips over and they grabbed it and tried to hold it down while bad Comet Morehouse came around and said I'm coming back for another go and their men are all holding on and Herbert and Gerbert grabbed a hold and tried to hold it and everyone was holding it when bad Comet Morehouse came back and whoosh right overhead and it flipped again and the men went flying they're like no grab it grab it and each time it flipped it just broke and broke up and broke up and then again and again, and they said, oh no, they're gonna destroy the right flyer. And Gerbert says, it can't happen. I saw it in the Smithsonian. It can't happen when all of a sudden, up in the sky, there was a little light and it got bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was Haley's Comet, Haley's Comet to the rescue. Why you bad Comet Morehouse said Haley's Comet. Get away from that right flyer. And Bad Comet Morehouse says, you're too late, Haley's, as he came in closer and closer and closer. But Haley's was faster. Remember, he had figured out how to, how to get all of the infinite energy of the universe. And he came whoosh in and grabbed Bad Comet Morehouse by the tail. And he flung him around and around and around and whoosh shot him way out to the furthest regions of the solar system. Haley's Comet landed along the beach. Everyone stood and looked at horror at the right flyer that was broken to smithereens. It was, its wings were broken. It's, it's the, the engine had come discombobulated and the Wright brother said, well, brothers, well, brother, they said to each other, this isn't the first time we've had to go back to the drawing board. Let's pack it up and ship it back to our bike shop in Dayton, Ohio, and we'll fix it there. And if we could do this, we could do it again. And they didn't high five each other at that time, but they gave each other a strong pat on the back. And they looked at, at the three boys there. Now it was the three boys were Herbert and Gerbert and Johnny. And they said, young lads, let this be a lesson to you. Never give up trying. Because the difference between success and failure is when you stop trying. We're not too disheartened. We had a great day and we got a photograph of the very first human flight, engine powered human flight. And they had indeed done that. Well, Herbert and Gerbert were so overwhelmed with just excitement and joy. They couldn't believe it. They waved goodbye to Wilbur. Bye, Wilbur. Bye, Orville. Bye, Charlie. Bye, Johnny. Bye, all the rest of you all whose names I never knew. And they all waved, and Herbert and Gerbert went over the hill where they grabbed onto Haley's Comet's tail. And Haley said, sorry, I was almost a little too late. That bad Comet Morehouse, I try to keep track of where he is, but every once in a while he slips past me. Did you have a good day? We sure did, said Herbert. We sure did, said Gerbert. Well then, hold on tight, because I gotta get you back home in time for bedtime. And once again, they held tight, and Haley's Comet whoosh into the air. And he looped around, and this time, he went the other way. Phew, into the future. And he landed in their back alley, where they said, bye Haley's, Thanks for another great adventure. And Haley's comment said, My pleasure, fellers. I'll be back here for another one one of these evenings, so keep your eyes peeled for me. We will, said Herbert. We will, said Gerbert. Bye. Bye. And Haley shh, slipped away. And just at that very minute, their mother came to the back door and said, Herbert, Gerbert, time to come in and get ready for bed. They looked at each other. 
And instead of doing a high five, they did what the Wright brothers did and just slapped each other on the back and shook hands and off they went for another night's sleep to dream of more adventures. And that is the story of Herbert and Gerbert meeting the Wright brothers. I hope you enjoyed tonight's story. Root Bear, did you like the story tonight? Did you like it? You did? You hope this one really recorded? So do I, <laughs> so do I. Well, we hope to see you again next week, folks. Have a good weekend, get lots of sleep, and don't forget, oh yeah, lots of hugs. Get lots of hugs with each other, the people who love you. That's right. See you next time. But, oh, Root Bear's blowing kisses. I could blow you kisses too. Bye. Bye, friends.